with you tonight, and I thank the pastor um, allowing us to come and visit and present our ministry. Um, I got saved from American missionaries in the Philippines uh, in February of 1983. I'm from the northern part of the Philippines. And um, December 11, 1985, when I surrendered my life to serve the Lord full time, and I enrolled in Bible school June 17 of 1986, and been serving the Lord since the time. And uh, also my wife got saved through a ministry that is started by an American missionary many years ago, and she got saved when she was nine years old through her Sunday school teacher. And um, since nine, uh, 1986, I've been work, uh, though I'm studying in Bible school, working also in um, the church as a, one of the pastoral staff. And then in May 5 of 1992, when I started church planting ministry in the Philippines. In the space of seven years, the Lord has allowed me to start three churches in, in our country. And um, November of 99, I went to Thailand with my pastor. He asked me to go with him. And I said, uh, if I'm going with you, you have to pay for my ticket. So, <laughs> of course, we went there thinking that uh, he really had this um, uh, desire to go to the mission field. And I'm thinking that I'll go with him. He'll talk to me that I will pastor our home church. But it turned out the Lord has another plan. So the Lord has burdened my heart. After three days being in Thailand, I came back, talked to my wife, and I said, let's pray. The Lord is going to lead us in a foreign mission. And so... After a few months of praying, uh, by February of 2000, I resigned from my pastoral work and even in my job. And then we prepared ourselves for three months and we went to Thailand as missionary. And we've been there serving the Lord for the past 23 years. Now, Thailand, if you go to the Southeast Asia region, Thailand, the first Baptist church was established in Thailand in 1883. There's a Chinese sailor who got saved under the ministry of William Carey. And he went to Thailand reaching the Chinese people there. And uh, until now, you will see the Maitri Chit Baptist Church is the oldest Baptist church uh, in Southeast Asia region. In the Philippines, it came in uh, 1900. In Thailand, it's in 1883. And um, with that note, if you would... You know, pastors have been to Thailand, and if some of you have been to that country, and if you would observe and make a survey, if you can find 100, let's say you include even the Southern Baptist churches, if you can find 100 Baptist churches, you would say, Amen. But you cannot have 100. But just in case, you will have 100, just to be safe, with 50 members in each church, you're only looking at 5,000 Baptist people with 73 million in population. And with that history of Baptist church in Thailand, that's how hard it is to reach that country with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Few years back, I attended a conference that had been hosted by the World uh, Church Council. There's a group of churches that made a survey and they studied about uh, mission work all over the world. And according to their director, there are two countries in the world that is very hard to reach the people. Number one, Australia. Number two, Thailand. I don't know why it's Australian. I did not ask. But uh, I think going around, I know. <laughs> uh, it's, it's very hard to see also the Baptist church here. But anyway, in Thailand, because it's a very strict Buddhist, their laws, um, feasts, um, policies, and all according in, to the Buddhist manuscript. But you know one thing that gave us breakthrough when I went there as a missionary? In the Buddhist manuscript, there are about 33, 37 manuscripts that they would study and would read. There in the last page, on the time when they called him Lord Buddha, on his dying moment, 
he called his disciples. This is written in the manuscript. He called his disciples and he told them that someone greater than him will come. It's written in the Buddhist manuscript in Thailand. And then one of the disciples have asked him, what would be his name? How are we going to um, recognize this person that is greater than you? He said, number one, you will see Mark in his hand. And number two, his name will be called Pra Messiah. Pra is a Thai word for God. Messiah, wherever you go, whether you are an Arab, whether you are in the Filipino, or wherever you go, that Messiah is only pronounced Messiah all over the world. Even here, it's Messiah. So who is that Messiah? According to them. So we were able to bring the word of God and explain to them who is the true Messiah. And because of that, we have Buddhist people who are so strict that one of the... Um, number of them came to know the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that he is the true Messiah. And one of that, uh, one young man who got saved in our Bible study, he used to be a monk, and he is using that to our new to visitors that would come every Sunday, telling them that Jesus Christ is the true Messiah. So we praise the Lord in our 23 years. Uh, we were able to establish four churches in Bangkok, in the southern part of Thailand, it's a Muslim territory, but we're able to uh, present the gospel there. We have about 17 people that attends there. The pastor that we have just had a heart attack two, three years ago, and so we are still praying for somebody who would go there and uh, uh, work in our church. In the southern part of Thailand is Grace Baptist Church. We have one in the northeast. And we started that ministry. We have 57 people that attends there. And on the northern part of Thailand, as you mentioned, uh, see a while ago, we have the, uh, uh, the orphanage ministry, a children ministry, where we're able to help children that are being sold, and sometimes as a human trafficking, some of them doesn't have parents, and uh, by faith. One of the things that is very hard to do, this kind of ministry, is that... Uh, you know, it's hard to go to churches and um, telling them about the children ministry because you might be accused of using them to get money. <laughs> so uh, I refuse to do this kind of ministry, but every time I would see them, it, tears will be my, uh, round on my face, and it's hard to breathe when you see these children being abandoned by their parents and they have no future. And so with that, I ask the Lord, just, you know, whatever the Lord has blesses us, we will try to help children. And, uh, um, so please do pray for us. And then you see the, uh, uh, a land uh, a while ago, and it's a future uh, site of Grace Baptist Church. That land is probably the same size as your sanctuary here. It's 3,200 square meter property. It was given to us by an old couple who got saved in our soul winning. One day, as uh, Sunday morning service, the offering plate was passed, and then I noticed there is a A4 size of uh, paper, and it's orange, and I said, wow, money is big now, <laughs> big of a size. And then when I look at it, it's the title deed of the land that was given by the old couple who used to be Buddhist, but came to know the Lord Jesus Christ, and they got saved. So in the future, we will build a church building there. Probably that would sit only about 70 to 100 people, because it will cost 50,000 Australian dollars to build one like that. So we are praying, amen. Maybe we have a millionaire here. You can spare 50000 on our way back. If you can just spare a small piece of paper, that will be a great blessing. That will be our fifth church uh, in Lopburi uh, province. It, you, you will pass that pastor when you go to Nakonso, and you will see the big sign, uh, Lopburi, and then Singburi, Chinat, and then Nakonso. That's the only Baptist church there also, and uh, we are surrounded by... Uh, Buddhist temples. And then the church building that you see, the Grace Baptist Church, um, we started, we don't know anybody in Thailand, uh, we don't know the language, by God's grace we learn, and um, we have one Bible study, and then it grows, 
So the October 2005 or 2003, October 5, 2003, we organized Grace Baptist Church and it becomes our headquarters. And um, uh, a good number of Thai people came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And a young couple got saved in our home Bible study. They donated the land. Uh, actually not donated, they sold us the land uh, 50% uh, of the price. We gave the money, and then after one week, the money that we gave them, it returned to the offering plate. They just want to put something in the offering plate. So, so we praise the Lord, and then uh, two, uh, May of 2009, we started uh, saving money, people sacrificed, gave and uh, after 10 months, we were able to build Grace Baptist Church, and we are surrounded. We are in the middle of eight Buddhist temples. We are the, oh, they were the white building. People will pass by, and they would see that white building. They would say, wow, what is that? It's Christian. So they would come, and then we explain to them salvation. So we praise the Lord. You know, sometimes... Um, Yes, it's hard. Everywhere is hard. Philippines, U.S., here. But when you have the power of God, when God says, you'll go and just uh, preach the gospel, not by our might, not by our power, but by God's grace. So he gave us that ministry. And so we praise the Lord. After 23 years, we've been there. And I said, Lord, what do you want us to do more? Maybe 20 more years, I don't know. But hopefully Jesus will return tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That will be, that will be a great blessing. Yeah. And so uh, we rejoice. Now this evening, um, um, I'd like to share in a few minutes the word of God in Acts chapter number 15. We will have, be opening a good number of scripture. Um, I praise the Lord, you know, when we have conference, I would, uh, when Pastor Yusuf would, would preach and teach us the Word of God, I would listen attentively. And uh, I still have the message, two messages that you preach. So I told him a while ago, I will preach that message tonight. See if you can remember. <laughs> Acts chapter number 15, verse number 3. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Pinus and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. When they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them shall we look to the lord in prayer father in heaven we are thankful and grateful for your wonderful grace and mercy that you have given us and we are here this evening to worship you O god and spirit and in truth bless us with your word revive our heart lord will continually be able to see your perfect will in our life thank you for this wonderful evening for I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you notice that word in verse number three, and being brought, that word brought, on their way by the church, and the church is also there being, being brought. That word brought is a Greek, it's a Greek word, that you would see there, it is propempo, brought, propempo. Now that word propempo is very important for us to learn because it involved the church and its mission. Here, and the, and the church and being brought, who are they going to brought? The apostles, the servants, the preachers. The church is bringing the... Uh, the servant of the Lord, and they passed through Venice and declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. The word propemko means to bring from place to another place. To bring one person from place to another place. 
It is very important for a church for us to know and understand that to uh, see this, especially in the ministry of Apostle Paul, what is the ministry of the church towards the Apostle Paul's ministry? As you would know, also go to Romans chapter number 15. Let's go to Romans chapter number 15. Again, Apostle Paul wrote, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, wrote the book of Romans. And in verse number 22 in Romans chapter number 15. For which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you. But now, having no more place in these parts, and having a great desire this many years to come unto you, whensoever I take my journey into Spain, I will come to you, for I trust to see you in my journey to be brought. Propemco. Propemco. To be brought on my way, thitherward by you, if first... I be somewhat filled with your what? Company. Company. Talking to the believer, to the church. I need your company. There's something that I need from you, church. I need your company. For us as a church, as you would, another scripture in Acts chapter number 20. Let's see that chapter also in Acts chapter number 20. Verse number 33, I begin read there. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have showed you all things how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give and to receive. And when he had spoken, when, when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's Neck, verse 38, and kiss him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake, and uh, that they should see his face no more, and they accompanied him unto the sheep. Another word is written there, propemko, propempo, the Greek word. Bringing someone from place to another. There's someone in our, as a church, how can we be a blessing to the work of, let's say, missionary? How can I be a blessing to these people who labor to other places? You will read the scripture here. First thing that we could see is by prayer. They prayed for Apostle Paul. Amen. There is a church, it's a very small church, probably about 15, 15 uh, people that would come to the church on a Sunday and eight on a Wednesday. And you would see on the uh, wall in their church, there are probably about 68 missionaries there. Though they don't support them financially because they are not able, but he, the pastor said each of those missionaries on that wall, our church prayed for them every day. They prayed. One of the things that we could do as a church and as a, a member of the church is that we could pray for our missionary. We put face on, on our prayer that this missionary... Many years ago, when we were in Thailand, I think it's still our first two years, my wife got sick, she needs to undergo surgery, we don't have money. I went all over Bangkok City asking for a discount. We don't have insurance. It's very hard. The one hospital, they would need six to $9,000 for her surgery. We don't have that money. 
Until finally on the fourth hospital, the director says, we can give you about $2,700. And I said, well, by faith, we'll just go to this hospital. So they prepared her, did the surgery. I went home uh, to our room. All the light is on, but it's still so dark. And I prayed the whole night. I don't know what to do, but then, Lord, you brought us here with only $475 a month support, but we are here to serve the great God. I cried the whole night because we have no money to pay the hospital. But the next, but the next day, that morning, my phone rang, and on the other line, they mentioned my name, and I said, yes, this is Brother Goodlie. And then the person on the other line, the reason I called, she said, because we would like to send you money. And I said, nobody knows us, nobody knows our need, but there's a call that they're going to send us something. You know, I, I should not ask it, but uh, I asked the person on the other line, and I asked how much. <laughs> you know, and she said, they're going to send $4,000. And um, Joe just looked down. What I need, what we need is 2,700. We have extra 1,300. Amen. And oh, how did they get that money? They are children in their church. They did a daily vacation Bible school for 10 days. And all the coins that were collected, $4,000. And there's a girl who pointed at our picture, and she said, just send that, that coin, so that money, to that family right there. Z, people prayed. Amen. Sometimes we think that our prayer is not being answered, or maybe it's just a ritual, but you don't realize, my dearly beloved in the Lord, that when you mention that missionary in your prayer, God sent his power. That's what happened. To other missionaries. Where they are almost, they are being ambushed by this tribe. But the tribal leaders halted the ambush because he, he realized that they are being surrounded by angels. It was Saturday morning, and there is a church in Scotland, a small church where a group of men praying for that missionary. Why? Their prayer. This is what we prayed right here. The church prayed for Apostle Paul, and they brought him to the ship, and they brought him there. Those people care for Apostle Paul and prayed for them. And this thing that we can do as a church, my dearly beloved in the Lord, is that for us to pray for those people who labor for the glory of God. Without the prayer, we will not be able to continue in Thailand. Praise God. Not only is this... this uh, the church prayed, that's the word propemco, propempo. Another thing that the, the church can do is provide. As Apostle Paul, he says, you know, I, I did not take advantage of you. I did not ask for this. I did not ask for that. But the, the Lord Jesus Christ says, it is better to give than to receive. And he would tell you all about the story about the church of Macedonia. Well, those poor people, they give liberally to help the work in Jerusalem. They have given sacrificially. Why? Because the people in Jerusalem, if they are saved, if they are followers of Christ, and if you are a businessman, you have a store, if they would learn that you are a follower of Christ, they will not go to your store. They will not buy. That's how they're persecuted. No business for Christian people in Jerusalem. They're a follower of Christ. But there are people in Macedonia and other parts and cities that Apostle Paul visited, even though they are suffering, struggling, and yet they give 
liberally to help those brethren in Jerusalem. And Apostle Paul, it says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. That's why he said to the church of Philippi, my God, will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And I went to Thailand and not asked for this and that, but the Lord provided, amen, his supply with that $475 a month for a few months or a year. It is not enough if you will use your math. But if you will use the economy of God, it's more than enough. Because God uses people. He uses churches to provide for missionaries as they go and preach the word of God. Why? Because as you give, the Lord will bless your labor. Amen. Your fruit will increase. Not only that, um, of course, we have more scripture there, but not only with that uh, uh, prayer and provision, financial support to them as a church, but also emotionally, they cry for Apostle Paul. Show that this missionary will feel love. That we really, that you really show the partnership. You see, partnership. Amen. Enriching the world for Christ. Enriching the souls that need to hear the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a partnership between this mission that is in the church. You do it emotionally. Sometimes, you know, I would collect those letters that are sent to us, our card. I would say, Brother Goodlie and the family. We are praying for you. When I would hear, when I would read a message and then hear a message, a call, and they would say, we're praying for you. Wow. Amen. Hallelujah. It keeps going. It's like a, 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 a something that will happen, it's something that will ignite in your heart that you keep on going when churches or a brethren or a brother or a sister would send you a message and says, we're praying for you. I'd like to encourage you. Amen. It's a great blessing. That word, propempo. Three ways that you can be part of that missionary life. Prayer, provision, Partnership, especially with your emotion. It's a great blessing. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for allowing me to be this evening.